the wondrous cross on which the prince of glory died my richest gain I count but loss and poor on all my pride forbid it Lord that I should boast save in the death of Christ my them to his blood see from his head his hands his feet sorrow and love blow mingled down Did that were an offering far too small love so amazing so divine demands my soul my soul love demands my soul my life my I could say one thing it would be he's the best thing if I could say one word Jesus would be heard if I had but one breath I'd use it to praise him with for he is really all that matters when this thing is over cross death's cold waters then we'll see more clearly see that really he's there if this were my last day i would shout jesus all the way if this were my last smile i'd spend it praising him a while if i had but one breath i'd use it to praise him with for he is really all that matters when this thing is over cross death's cold waters then we'll see more clearly see that really he's there if he hadn't loved me like he does where would i be if he hadn't saved me i'd suffer through eternity if i had but one breath i'd use it to praise him with for he is really 
All that matters when this thing is over. Cross death's cold waters, then we'll see more clearly. See that really he's there. Then we'll see more clearly. See that really he's there. For he is really all that matters to me. Amen. I enjoyed that song. I'm so glad he sees what we don't. Um, I'm also glad this morning that I don't have what I deserve. You know, a lot of people go through this world, go through this life, and thinking they're owed something, thinking they're owed something, or they deserve something. And I was on my way to work the other day, and uh, I thought to myself, man, Lord, I, I sure am thankful that you gave me things that I don't deserve, but that you don't give me what I do deserve. I like that song. I'm glad he sees what we don't. I love this song too. It is well with my soul. I want you to sit back and listen to the words of this song and just let it speak to your heart this morning. Attended my way when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say. Buffet, though trials should come, let this blessed assurance control that Christ has regarded my. about this one <laughs> my sin oh the bliss on this glorious star my sin not in part but the next verse says, and Lord, haste the day when my faith, it's going to eventually be sight. The cloud's going to be rolled back just like a scroll. And the trump's going to resound and the Lord's going to descend even more. It is well with my soul. And I really want you to focus on this last verse and think about it. Listen, 
And Lord, haste the day when my face shall be sight. The clouds be rolled back as a scroll. The trumpet shall resound and the chorus with me. Here we go. It is well with my soul. It is well. It is well with my soul. morning. What a blessing to see you. Uh, I actually can't see you, but you'll be able to see me uh, with a, by means of a video service this morning. So uh, I enjoyed the good singing, and uh, praise the Lord we were able to have that uh, from previous services. Uh, the Wonders Cross, I love that song, and I appreciate Miss Kendall, uh, whether he is really all that matters, and Brother Jeremy, uh, it is well with my soul. Uh, very grateful uh, for that good singing for our service today. And I want to say a special thank you uh, one more time to Brother Alan Bradley taking care of all of our video recordings. Uh, during this two weeks that we are uh, shut down in person. And I want to thank Brother Josh uh, for doing a fantastic job this past Wednesday night uh, preaching and taking care of service. Uh, Miss Lynn and I were able to uh, spend a few days out of town celebrating the 25th wedding anniversary. And so I appreciate uh, those guys uh, standing uh, and taking care of services during that time. Just want to say thank you to the church uh, and to so many who have uh, graciously given to my family, uh, to me, and my wife, and my kids uh, during this Christmas season. Uh, appreciate the church and their very generous uh, Christmas gift to us. And uh, we've gotten uh, gift cards and homemade uh, peanut brittle and candy and treats and goodies and coffee mugs and fun things. And uh uh, you all are so very good to this pastor and his family, and I'm incredibly grateful for that. So just want to say thank you uh, one more time. I, I want to uh, let you know, stay tuned until the very end. Uh, after we close in prayer, we'll have a few special announcements uh, about our service schedule, our upcoming revival, and, uh, and how things are going uh, in that light. And so uh, stay with me uh, until after the message. And I'll have some special updates for that. I hope you had a wonderful Christmas. If you have a Bible, uh, maybe you got to get up off the couch and run and get a Bible. But uh, now's the time to have it. John chapter 1. John chapter number 1. Uh, I've talked to several people and uh, you, you hear the uh, statement from many, this is not what we expected. Uh, this is a, a very different Christmas. But uh, I'll say it may be different than I had planned, but the Lord always knew how things were going to be. Uh, and he has blessed us with another year, another time to celebrate the birth of his precious son, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. And so uh, it, it may have been different, but it, it sure was good. Uh, we enjoyed it. We had a good time, and uh, I, I'm praying that you did it as well. Uh, but this Christmas season, uh, I, I'm always uh, thinking about what now, because Christmas is over. Uh, and for the world, many of them, this will be the last they think about Jesus uh, for another year. Uh, and many of them, they're fine with the baby Jesus, but uh, they are troubled with who he really is. Uh, and in John's gospel, we see a little bit of that, that God spells it out very clearly. And uh, you see the Christmas story as God would tell it through John. But uh, in, in, in his word, about he starts off, he says in verse 1 of John chapter 1, uh, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. 
Now keep in mind who we're, we're speaking about Jesus Christ. We're speaking about God. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of that light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, speaking of John, he was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came into his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the, fle nor the, will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. We beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Let's pray. Father, we love You. I thank You for Your Word this morning. Lord, I pray You'd make it come alive. Lord, I pray it would stir our hearts, challenge us. And uh, Lord, I pray it would, if there's somebody that's uh, listening in today that doesn't know You as their Savior, Lord, I, I pray today to be the day. Lord, they'd uh, have full assurance uh, of their salvation, Lord, that they trust you as their personal Savior. Lord, I pray for your people uh, today that, uh, Lord, this Christmas season would just simply light a fire under us to be about your business, be doing what you'd have us to do. Bless tremendously those that are sick and having issues, and Lord, I pray you bless your word, and we'll give you glory and praise for it in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. John's Christmas story here... <clears throat> In the book of John, it's a little different than Luke's account, a little different than Matthew's account. Uh, and, and when I say different, I, I don't mean there's contradictions. I just mean it's a little different way of telling it. Uh, but Jesus, born of a virgin. But don't miss this because uh, we're, we're going to see it pointed out. And if you'll remember, years, several years ago as we preached through the book of John, uh, don't miss it. It is Emmanuel. It is God with us. God in the flesh, Jesus born of a virgin, God in human flesh. Uh, 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 God came down to earth uh, living among us. This theme uh, of the book of John is Jesus is God. And, and I'll go so far as to say if you don't believe that Jesus is God, then you're not saved. Uh, it, it's impossible. Uh, you must believe who He is and what He's done. The, the Bible, I, I love certain books of the Bible, and it seems that God allows John to do this. Uh, uh, spells out very specifically why the book was written. And in John 20, and in verse number 30, the Bible says, "...in many other signs, uh, truly did Jesus in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book." But these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have, you might have life through His name." God give us this book, has given us this book, the book of John, uh, so that we might believe. Uh, uh, this whole book will be focused on that one central goal as you study John, uh, uh, that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through His name. Uh, uh, this is pinned down uh, for, in order for you to believe and to trust Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. I mentioned Emmanuel, God with us. Uh, Jesus is God. He has always been God. He always will be God. Uh, the Bible says, uh, uh, he says uh, there in verse number 3, uh, all things were made by Him. Uh, who is this? We're, we're talking about God. Uh, uh, Jesus, right? He says all things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. Uh, uh, God created it all, uh, and if that's not true, the entire Word of God falls apart. Uh, I'll tell you, it is perfect today. Uh, as you look at Jesus Christ, and uh, right, the world takes Him easily as a babe in a manger, but look, there was a, a tremendous importance, right, that follows His birth now that the Christmas season is over uh, and we're moving out of that. It's kind of a what now. Well, don't miss the what now. Don't miss uh, why He came. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. Uh, he is life. Uh, uh, there's a problem today that uh, not everybody uh, wants to receive that life and that light. The Bible goes to dealing with that very quickly in verse 5. <clears throat> He says, 
And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. And that little word comprehended, uh, it simply means to lay hold on or to make one's own. Uh, and so we already see a problem is here, and there's still a problem today. Uh, he's still the light of the world, but the world is not comprehending or laying hold of or making him their own. I, I love some of the stories you tie it together. Uh, and, and we've already looked at uh, John the Baptist and, and the birth there with uh, Zacharias and Elizabeth a few services ago. But God uses him as a witness. He says, there was a man sent from God. His name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that that all men through him might believe. Do you see why Jesus came? That men might believe. That we might be saved. He came as our Savior. He, uh, talking about John again in verse 8. He was not that light, but was, was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. There's so much truth in this text, in these passages. One thing you can't miss. Uh, this light and this truth is for everybody. <laughs> And there are many today who do not believe that. Uh, but I'm telling you, if they read the Bible, if they read the Word of God, they will find it all through Scripture. He, he says, uh, the same came for witness, to bear witness of that light, that all men through Him might believe. In the end of verse 9, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Uh, these truths are for everyone. He is the Savior of the whole world. World, That's who we have celebrated a few days ago. Uh, and that's who we ought to be living for as we move forward. He is the Savior of the world. 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 10, For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust the living God, who is the Savior of all men. Uh, I, I love what the angel said over, I, I believe in Luke 2. He says, uh, he said, uh, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. Uh, uh, he bore the, uh, right, he, he came for all. Uh, 1 John chapter 2 and verse 2. And he is a propitiation for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Uh, he has died, he has bore the penalty for the sins of everyone. Uh, but the real problem, the tragedy lies, uh, even though he died for everybody, everybody's not going to choose to be saved. Uh, and, and that's the great tragedy today. There are so many who are happy to celebrate him as a babe in a manger. But keep in mind, he came uh, as Savior of the world to bring life and light to all men. I love what John is doing. And you say, what is John doing? He's doing exactly what you and I ought to be doing. Uh, he's doing the job of a child of God and he's pointing people to Christ. He's not promoting himself. He's pointing others to Christ. In, in, uh, in verse 29, the Bible says, uh, he says, The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Uh, you say, well, what, what is our job? Our job is simply to point people to Jesus. Uh, at this season that we're in, uh, right, uh, Jesus is born and uh, the reason He's born is to pay the price for our sin and for the sins of all men. And, and you say, well, it, it ought to have been amazing. He's been prophesied about all the way back in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15 and, and many other texts we've shared through this Christmas season of messages. But uh, you would have to know that uh, these Jewish people, His own, uh, they've been expecting Messiah to come. They've been watching for Him. Uh, they, they've been on the lookout. Uh, and we know, right, they should have been. But you say, what is the problem? Uh, how did men really receive Him? Uh, verse number 10 starts starts to be kind of heartbreaking. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came into his own. Well, don't you like those little words there, he came? That's the Christmas story. He came into his own, but here's the tragedy, and his own received him not. Uh, that is heartbreaking today. Uh, the world he had made uh, didn't even recognize him for who he was. He created this world and now he's born. Uh, he's already told us that he was coming. He already told them he was coming, but yet they will not recognize him. Uh, something amazing, and I mentioned the words happens there in verse 11. He came. <laughs> Uh, the Christmas story in, in John, uh, taking on a robe of flesh, arriving to save lost man. He came into his own, and his own received him not. 
Those two little words, He came, that changes everything for you and me. Uh, uh, we have become so desensitized to the fact that Jesus came. You and I ought to never get over that. Uh, that ought to move us, help us, uh, encourage us. Uh, uh, you, you say, uh, you, why did He come? Well, one of the reasons why He came is He always keeps His promises. Uh, and, and He promised that He was co going to come. Uh, but I'll tell you, He came so I didn't have to spend eternity in a lake of fire. He came so that I could have sweet fellowship with the Holy God. He came so that... It, I, as a man who was once very limited in my access to God, now has complete access to the throne room to come boldly before the throne of grace. Uh, in Mark 15 and verse 38, in the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. Hey, because he came, everything's different. Uh, because he came, what was it for us? It was God with us. God loves us so much that he was willing to come. Don't ever let those words get old. Don't ever let them lose their joy. Uh, don't ever uh, just, well, Christmas is over, pack up the decorations. No, no, don't ever lose sight of He came. He always keeps His promises. He came into who? Well, He came into His own. <coughs> you say, who are His own? Well, His own are the Jews. Uh, when He came to the Jews, uh, what happened? Well, we see it in the text. He came into His own, but His own? Received him not. You say, why would anybody reject the Savior? Well, that's still a question that needs to be asked today. Why are you rejecting him? One of the reasons we find in the rich young ruler over in Mark chapter 10, many are rejecting him because it might cost you something. In Mark 10 and 22, this rich young ruler has been talking with Jesus and, and, and the Bible says, and he was sad at the saying and went away grieved for he had great possessions. You say, what did Jesus tell him? Sell, sell everything you got and give it to the poor. Uh, basically, uh, where's your heart at? Is your heart on all the riches that you have or is your heart really about following me? Uh, for many, it's what it'll cost them. For many, it'll be, uh, they'll have a changed life and they're way too in love with their old life. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Well, there are many that are so in love with the world today that they, they just simply do not want to give it up. Many times we reject Him. Uh, many times, even as a child of God, we reject His leading because we're too in love with the stuff that we're doing uh, and we're not in love with Him. Uh, I've said it several times. Many are fine with a baby in a manger, uh, with shepherds and with wise men, but that's where it stops today. Why? Because who He really is, right? He was born of a virgin in a manger, but He really came as Savior of the world uh, and many are too in love with this wicked world and the God of this world uh, to ever decide to follow Jesus uh, we can see multitudes of reasons why they might have rejected him uh, and, and often you go well those Jews are a little too hard on him if I were there if I were there things would have been different uh, uh, it, it, maybe not I look at God's people today and look at my own self at times today and, and I have so much more availability to the truth than those folks ever had. Uh, and, and many times we still reject. Many times uh, you, 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 have, uh, you reject Him and, and you have all the time and you have the whole Word of God available. Uh, you have the Holy Spirit of God living inside you if you are saved. And at times you still don't receive direction from Him. You've been given what? A more sure word of prophecy. Uh, a complete uh, book, uh, the Bible from the Lord. And yet oftentimes we still reject His leading in our lives. Why? It might cramp in on us and our plans. But God has different plans. God has better plans. And I'd encourage you today, uh, don't be so quick to cast stones at them. Uh, and uh, be encouraged also as well that that verse doesn't stop when he came into his own, his own received him not. Uh, there's an interruption there. Uh, as a whole, they reject him, but, but all of them don't. Uh, he says, but as many as received him. Boy, what a blessing today. Uh, it says, To them gave He power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on His name, which were born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. 
Well, I'm going to tell you what, you ought to be so thankful. And I am so thankful today that there were some of those Jews who did not reject the Savior. Uh, praise the Lord, I'm thrilled that some of them received Him. It may not have been by the masses, but there were a few. And you say, oh, what's one thing we ought to be so thankful about? Well, we learn in Romans chapter 3, uh, in verses 1 and 2, the Bible says, What advantage then hath the Jew? Or what profit is their circumcision? He says, why are you so thankful for the Jews? Boy, in verse number two, much every way chiefly, because that were committed unto them, the oracles of God. Boy, were it not for the Jews, you wouldn't have a Bible. Uh, were it not for the Jews, and let me remind you, you wouldn't have a Savior because Jesus is a Jew. And so some of those Jews did receive Him. Uh, we have the precious Word of God because God breathed it uh, through those men. Uh, and you know what? I, I wish I would have received Him when I was there. Maybe so, maybe not. Uh, but know this, uh, His own disciples had a hard time believing at times. They had a hard time believing He's really who He said He was. Uh, how about after the resurrection? Uh, old Thomas, uh, he's not there. He wasn't with them when Jesus came. Uh, and, and he's looking, and unless I put my hands on him, uh, unless I can touch him, uh, Thomas has a hard time believing that he's risen from the dead. How about Peter and his buddies after Jesus has uh, uh, been crucified? And you, you know where Peter is? Uh, I go a fishing. I'm going to take a bunch of guys with me. Uh, we, we need to not be so quick as to say what we would do a lot of times. Uh, it's but by the grace of God that we do what we do in the first place. Uh, the Jews claim they had wanted to see the Father, and the whole time they don't realize what Jesus told His disciples. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. He's the manifestation of the Father. Uh, now you look and you say, well, well, how can I receive Him? Know this, you don't have the power or the authority to make yourself a son of God. That means not everyone is a child of God. I hear it frequently and it, and it bothers me kind of in a heartbreaking way because I think it's the mindset of our world today. It's a tool of the devil. But I'll hear people say, well, we know we're all God's children. And they're just referring to man. And I've got an announcement and it's... Uh, Trying to speak the truth in love. I don't say this out of cruelty, but I say this because it's true. We are all God's creation, but we're not all God's children. Boy, to become a child of God, it takes a work, not of me, but of the Lord. But as many have received Him, to them gave He power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on His name. I, you say, where, where's salvation found? It's still found in believing. You say, what, what do you mean, Pastor, about believing that He is who He said He is and He's done what He said He would do? Uh, uh, he's not just a man, but He's the God-man who took on human flesh. He humbled Himself, and right, He said took on the form of a servant. And, and he, he, He's not just any man, He's the God-man. He's 100% God, and He's 100% man. Well, he's Christ. He, he was there uh, in, in creating the world. Uh, uh, that he was God and that he is God and that he'll always be God. Uh, uh, right? God the Son came down to earth to live among us, to live a sinless life, and to show us the Father. You say, what do you know about salvation? What do you know about receiving him? It's from God alone, which were born not of blood, nor the will of flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. It doesn't come to you through your uh, family heritage. Uh, it doesn't come to you because you joined a church or you're part of this group or that group. Uh, I, I love a lot, a lot of people say, well, this is because of my great heritage or, or this, that, or the other, talking about a blood relation. You say, what does blood relation bring you today, uh, right? Uh, blood related to anybody here on this earth. Well, it just ties you to the sin uh, and the death that was brought on by the first man who willfully sinned, uh, and that was Adam. Uh, that's all that blood relation there is going to bring you. Uh, you'll never work hard enough. You can't make yourself a child of God no matter how hard you try. Uh, no man can make you saved. Not your parents. Not a pastor. Not a priest. Not, not, not a loving grandfather or grandmother. Uh, you can't ride a bicycle far enough and knock on enough doors in order to be saved. Uh, you can't do enough work. You can't uh, 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 give enough. 
You say, well, how did Jesus put it in John 3? He tells Nicodemus, uh, here's how it works, Nicodemus. Ye must be born again. I don't know about you, but I don't have anything at all to do with my birth. Uh, that was something that was completely up to my parents physically here on this earth. <laughs> that, that my physical birth. And I'll tell you this, other than believing, I don't have anything to do with my spiritual birth. Salvation is only of the Lord. I sinned. <laughs> Uh, and he didn't sin. He came to earth as a sinless, spotless Lamb of God to die on an old rugged cross and to pay my sin debt. Hey, that's why he came as a babe in a manger. I was helpless. I was hopeless. And I was uh, uh, lost and alone without Christ. You say, well, I don't like all that. Well, let, let, me, let me say it this way. He's God, and he has every right to tell you what brings salvation. I think about the mentality of our world today. Well, God shouldn't do this. Now, now wait a minute. Uh, if He's God, then, then He's the one in charge. Well, I don't believe a, a God would do this, that, or the other. Well, well, guess what? The whole problem with that is He's God, and we're not. Uh, and He's got every right to tell us uh, how things are. Uh, and, and so He goes on, and something that bothers a lot of people uh, is that he, salvation is not of works, it's the gift of God. He said it's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. If I could work my way to heaven, I would have bragging rights when I get there. I would be bragging on how much, uh, how I came to church today and you didn't. You see how that could work? Well, I didn't miss any during the COVID time, Lord. I was there every service. You said forsake not the summing yourselves together. Uh, do, do you see how we can try to work our way? And there are a lot of cults out there today. Uh, that are trying to work their way to heaven, why it makes their flesh feel good. It gives them something to strive for. It gives them an accomplishment to pat themselves on the back. Uh, but there is much to be said about simply bowing a humble knee and heart before the Lord. Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I, I believe who you are. and Lord, I repent of my sins. And Lord, I want you to be my Savior. If you're saved today, He's done all the work. <laughs> it's something that He did and not something you did. That verse about, uh, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he, he's a new creature. I know folks today who may be listening and not, I'm just saying odds are in a crowd of the size of our church that will listen. There's probably somebody that's banking on what somebody said God did for them. I, I'm just saying I, I wouldn't want to step out into eternity uh, putting all my trust in what Grandma said I did. Or well, I, I'm just saying, has God done a work personally in your life? Uh, is it real to you? Is there a new creature there? Have you believed on Christ? It, it's not what somebody else did. It is the work that the Lord did. You can know God, but you can only know Him through who? The Lord Jesus Christ, His Son that He sent to a lost and dying world that we celebrate during this Christmas season. Have you allowed this book of John to accomplish God's purpose in your life. You say, what was that? We started off with it. But these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through His name. I'm glad that when others were rejected, there was a crowd that's believing, and I'm glad today when many are rejected, there's still a crowd that's believing. Well, I believe today, and I have life through His Name And if you really believe what you say you believe about Jesus being born uh, of a virgin uh, a, a, as a babe in a manger and all the uh, 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 beauty around the Christmas story, uh, don't tell me he's something that you can pack away and it not influence your life in any way whatsoever uh, until next Christmas. Uh, if you really believe today, uh, that is just the absolute beginning of a life that is completely change. Uh, he said uh, there in verse 12, but as many as received him, them gave you power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. I'm glad God is still interrupting lives. Uh, he, he says it in Ephesians uh, chapter number 2, and you had the quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. And I love the divine interruption, but God. But God. 
Uh, let Christmas be a reminder that God has interrupted the chaos, the mess of our lives, uh, the wicked condition that we are in. But God, who is rich in mercy for His great love, wherever He loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. For by grace He is saved. Boy, those verses there are so encouraging. You say, what happened? What do you know about this Christmas season? Boy, He interrupted my life so that I could be a child of God. He said it this way in 1 John chapter 3. Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not because it knew Him not. You say, what, what, what's Christmas all about? It's about me becoming a child of God. About you being able to become a child of God if you will believe on Him. Uh, one, one last thing I'll share with you and uh, then we'll close in a word of prayer and make a few quick announcements. If you're not reminded of anything else this Christmas season, I, I pray you'd listen for one sobering thought. We serve a God who always keeps His promises. He promised in Genesis 3.15 that He was coming. And, and guess what? Some 2,000 years ago, He came, but that's not the last promise He's made. Uh, he's made promises that He's coming again. He says it this way, he says, Beloved, now we are the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. You say, what do you know about our Savior? Boy, he kept his promises that he's coming the first time as a babe in a manger. But I'm going to tell you this, he's still coming again. <laughs> he said it in John 14, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am there, ye may be also. Verses out of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, For the Lord himself shall descend with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we, which are alive and remain to the coming of the Lord... <laughs> And then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Well, Acts chapter 1, you say, what do you know about promises? Well, God's made some promises. He, it, it, let Christmas be a reminder. He came the first time and guess what? He'll come again. He's coming back. You'd better be ready to meet Him. You'd better have Him, uh, uh, right, trust in Him as your Savior. And not only do I want to be saved, but I want to, know, I want to be about His business when He returns. The Bible says in Acts chapter 1, And when He had spoken these things, while they beheld, He was taken up, and a cloud received Him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. Can you imagine the disciples standing around watching Jesus ascend? <laughs> the angel says in verse 11 of Acts 1, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus which was taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Guess what? He came the first time. But know this, he's coming again. Are you ready to meet him today? If you're, if you're listening today and you don't know Christ as your Savior or all you know is what somebody told you happened, I'd make sure I know him as my, uh, for myself. I'd make sure I believed on him, had a changed life, had the Holy Spirit of God living inside me, that there are evidences of salvation in me, that I know, that I know, that I know. That I'm saved. You say, well, why do you need to know that? Well, for one reason, I'm going to meet him again. <laughs> right? Uh, I pointed out a man wants to die and after this to judgment. I, I, I will stand before him. But know this, just as good as he kept his first promise, he's coming again. Are you ready to meet him this morning? Let's pray. Father, we love you. Lord, I thank you for allowing me to be here today by means of video. And Lord, I thank you for the technology to do it. But Lord, I thank you that you came the first time. Lord, I thank you for who you are, Lord, that you're God in the flesh and you're here on the earth. And Lord, I thank you for dying for not only my sins, but for the sins of the whole world. If there's somebody listening today that doesn't know you as their Savior, Lord, I pray today'd be the day they'd bow a knee. Lord, maybe they'd want to make a phone call. Uh, Lord, I'd be glad to talk to them, tell them from your word how to be saved. Lord, I pray today'd be the day somebody would trust you as their personal Savior. Would I pray for that one that's, uh, or just kind of flippantly going along about your, uh, uh, Lord, 
supposedly about your business. Lord, I pray today would be the day they make some decisions to be ready. Uh, Lord, to be doing what you'd have them to do when you return. Lord, I, I pray that you'd come quickly. Lord, I can't wait to see you. Lord, bless our church and our church family. Lord, those that are sick. Uh, Lord, just a few with this virus. Lord, I thank you for watching over them so carefully. And I pray you'd just continue to heal them up quickly. I pray that our efforts, uh, Lord, to uh, have everybody away from the building for a couple of weeks, uh, that you'd bless that tremendously, Lord, and bless our upcoming revival. Lord, I pray you'd have your hand on us as we'll, uh, we'll be there with Brother Bagwell. And Lord, I pray you'd just, uh, uh, Lord, do a great work during this peculiar time, uh, Lord, of, uh, uh, of coronavirus and difficulties in our world. But, Lord, I pray you'd do something special for your people, uh, Lord, next Sunday and next week. Lord, we love you. Lord, we give you all glory and praise for everything that's been said and accomplished. And, uh, Lord, we ask it in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Just a few quick announcements I want to share with you uh, about our upcoming services. For the past, uh, uh, since last Sunday... There's pretty much been nobody in the building except a couple people to record. And Brother Alex has came back through uh, each time and sanitized the building. So nobody else has been here. And so we've done all we can uh, to keep this place uh, kind of under quarantine as much as possible. Uh, and so this coming Wednesday night, we will record just like this uh, one more time. Brother Allen and I. Uh, we'll be here, uh, and then we'll do another thorough cleaning of the building. And so we will begin uh, next Sunday with in-person services again. Uh, it'll be revival with Brother Mike Bagwell. And so we will have in-person Sunday school. Uh, it will only be in the sanctuary. Uh, there will be no separate kids' classes for Sunday school. So bring those kiddos. Brother Mike is animated enough. Uh, and I believe the Lord will bless and you can hang out here with them uh, and have a good time in Sunday school. And then we will stay in our exact same seats uh, for our Sunday morning service. And in an effort to not have everybody go out and come back, we will have a Sunday afternoon service that will be online. Uh, and so we'll meet Sunday for Sunday school uh, and we'll meet for Sunday morning service. And then Sunday afternoon will be online only, uh, but it will be broadcasted. Uh, with Brother Bagwell, I know he'll be in a series again, I would imagine. You probably won't want to miss that service. And then Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night at 7 p.m., we will meet in person. We will be sanitizing the building uh, completely uh, after each service. Uh, and so we feel like that's what the Lord would have us to do. Uh, I want to make uh, a couple of announcements uh, in light of if you're high risk, if you are fearful, if you are concerned, if you have reservations, then watch online. Uh, if you say, Pastor, I, just because we're having service, that doesn't mean that there is zero risk. If you go to Walmart, you assume risk. Uh, if you go to the grocery store, you're assuming risk. Uh, and so if you come to church, you just have to say, you know, they're doing all they can, uh, but I will be assuming personal responsibility uh, for the places that I'm going. Uh, and that's not unreasonable, but uh, from here forward, uh, for the next few months during this uh, season of cold and flu and wintertime illnesses, and uh, while this virus has seemed to have ramped back up with numbers, uh, let me make a special request. If you or anyone in your household is sick, got a fever, got ugly congestion, whatever, the whole crew, please stay home. Uh, I don't want to show up and tell you Miss Lynn's at home burning up with a fever and coughing and congestion. If that is the case, I don't need to be here. And so that may mean that there might be a few services where you see our associate pastor up here. Because uh, I can guarantee you through cold and flu season, uh, there'll be a time where my family has the cold, uh, has a cold or probably has the flu or a sickness or an illness. And so all we're asking to do uh, is if your crew, your house, if somebody's sick, then we need all y'all to stay home. That would be helpful, uh, but really what we're trying to do, and keep in mind it applies to the pastor, the associate pastor, the leaders, the teachers, uh, everybody working together uh, to keep us able to come and meet in person. That is the goal. Uh, and so hopefully that'll help us to keep on having church. If you have any questions about that, please call or text me. Uh, I'll be glad to talk to you about it, but just 
from here moving forward for the next few months, uh, let's make that the norm for us. Don't show up and say, my wife is at home burning up with a fever. Uh, th that means you should stay home with her. Uh, and they're probably not in the same room, but uh, uh, we're just saying be cautious. And when you are here, we need to ramp back up as much as possible. Uh, do not shake hands. Do not hug necks. Do not be close. And if you'll do those things, you could be in the building with somebody who is sick, and you never catch it if you'll follow proper protocol. And so we're just praying the Lord uh, will help us with that. One last announcement, and that's the reason I waited till the end uh, for some announcements. During this time when you're not able to physically be at church, uh, there are a couple of ways that you can still give if you would like to. The church has a secure P.O. box, post office box 613, post office box 613, and that's Milner, M-I-L-N-E-R, Milner, Georgia, the zip code is 30257, P.O. Box 613, Milner, Georgia, 30257, if you would like to mail in uh, a check for your tithe. Uh, and the other way that is very easy, if you are tech savvy, and if you're not, probably the easiest thing for you to do is the P.O. Box. But if you are, uh, have any tech, sa tech, tech savvy abilities, uh, you have a smartphone. There's an online giving app called Easy Tithe. Uh, just run those words together as you search for an app. You'll choose the name of the church and provide our church zip code, 30253. 30253. Uh, and one last thing, and the reason I'm mentioning that, there are a lot of times people are wanting to give at the end of the year uh, because they use their giving credit uh, as is allowed uh, towards their income taxes. Uh, and so it, if you're interested in making an offering before the end of the year, those are easy ways to do it. Uh, we're going to, uh, in keeping with the uh, distancing protocol, we're not going to count offering again until January the 3rd. But any checks uh, or easy tithe giving dated prior to January 1st will count for 2020. Uh, and so that is the best way for you to be able to do that. If you have any problems, you can call our treasurer, uh, Brother Andy, uh, or Secretary Miss Patty, or you can surely call myself. Uh, that's a lot of announcements. It's been good to see you and be with you in God's house. I miss you like crazy. Uh, you may be a little jealous that I get to be here, Brother Allen gets to be here, but I'm telling you, this building, as special as it is, it is not the church. The church is you. I can't wait to see you again. I'll see you by video on Wednesday night and then this coming Sunday morning. So looking forward to God's house uh, with people lifting up praises and having a good time in the house of the Lord. God bless you. I'll see you Wednesday night.